you all for coming on, uh, as I was just saying, Alexandra, to our, our hopefully more regular uh, IEEE Geoscience Remote Sensing uh, Instruments and Future Technology webinar that we hope to have in this time slot every month for foreseeable future. Uh, Alexandra has been uh, generous enough to be our first speaker of this round. Um, and she's going to be talking to us about LIDAR measurements of dust particles. Um, uh, as you read in the advertisement, she, she did her bachelor's degree in environmental engineering in Thrace, and then her PhD in remote sensing at the City University of New York. Uh, and now she's a, a postdoc at the National Observatory of Athens, which spans I guess, astronomy and space physics and remote sensing. Uh, and so uh, without further ado, look forward to seeing your talk. And thanks again for, for making time to, to present to us. Thank you very much. Um, let me say I try to uh, prepare this talk. Um, it's not perfect, but uh, I will. Uh, I hope you follow. Um, I didn't really know the um, how much people know about lidar, so we'll try. We'll see. Okay. So uh, let me take this one. Okay. So yes, hello. Uh, I will present you uh, our new polarization LIDAR for monitoring dust particle orientation. Um, as uh, already been said, um, I work at the National Observatory of Athens in the group of Vasilis Amiridis. And uh, very briefly, uh, this is our new LIDAR. We call it Wally -E because it looks like the Wally -E animation, and uh, we gave it this nickname. It has two lasers emitting linearly and elliptically polarized light at 1064 nanometers, and it measures back the different polarization states of the backscatter signal uh, with two telescopes, with two, two different detection systems, uh, detection units. Right now, it, uh, it provides orientation flags of yes or no orientation, but as I will uh, describe later, it also uh, in the future, it will provide the capability of, uh, it will provide us more information about uh, dust microphysics, uh, size and refractive index. And it has also the capability of measuring at different angles, different zenith and, and azimuth angles. I will uh, say a few things about what is a LIDAR, because what I said, I don't know uh, the familiarity of uh, all people with this uh, kind of instruments. So the LIDAR is an active remote sensing instrument which emits laser pulses and detects the backscattered light from the constituents of the atmosphere. So the light scattered at, uh, at 100, 180 degrees from the emission direction. Due to the pulsed function of the laser, we can derive the distance of the constituents from which we receive the backscattered light in the atmosphere. And this way, we derive this very nice. Do you see my? Uh, let me uh, have a laser pointer here to show. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, we have this very nice um, vertical um, profilings of uh, the atmosphere. These uh, are measurements from another LIDAR from our group, uh, the Polyx T LIDAR at uh, the Pagea station in Antikythera, Greece. So you see that uh, uh, on the x-axis is the time and on the y-axis is the height and you see aerosols above our LIDAR up to 4 to 4.5 kilometers and then clouds and the progressing uh, of uh, their vertical distribution in time. So going back to Wally, -E, um, one very nice feature of Wally -E is this two laser, two telescope concept it uses. So it has two lasers uh, and that emit uh, in their light in an interleaving, uh, in the interlaced way. So one after the other. And uh, their signals are detected by both uh, the telescopes, so which have two detectors uh, after each telescope. And uh, so in total, with this system, with this uh, concept, we um, 
we acquired eight different measurements. Um, so uh, that, that, that would take with four detectors that take two different systems, but with this interlaced uh, emission and acquisition we, we do, we have two instruments in one. Let's put it in this very specific way. So it provides higher SNRs uh, up to four times uh, with uh, if comparing to trying to derive uh, eight measurements with one laser and one telescope. Uh, it has no moving optics in receiver or transmitter uh, and that introduces less errors. And this is very important for polarization measurements we perform and it's more cost effective. And uh, I will give you a little bit of a background of why we built wall -E and why we want to detect dust orientation. So this uh, has been our work uh, in uh, the team of Asilis uh, within the framework of the ERC detect project for the last couple of years. And uh, actually we, the main question we want to we investigate and we want to address is why dust travels at longer distances than expected from dust transport models. Actually, there is a theory that uh, this happens because there are electric fields in dust layers. Uh, dust particles are charged, and then there is the electric force that counteracts the gravitational settling of the particles, and, which, and that uh, results in the particles being retained in the atmosphere for longer distances. So a side effect of this process uh, is that uh, the particles are, are also aligned along the, along the lines of the electric fields. And, and they are not anymore randomly oriented, but they are oriented. This is what we try to measure with our new LIDAR. There are some, indicate, some indications of um, dust orientation in Earth atmosphere. Uh, dust orientation in space is very common. Dust is aligned a lot magnetic, strong magnetic fields. But in the Earth's atmosphere, there are some indications from uh, a work from 2008 with satellite uh, measurements of the Kroik extinction, which is a clear signature of orientation of particles uh, in the atmosphere. But um, we built the LIDAR to try to describe also the vertical distribution of this phenomenon and describe the phenomenon in uh, uh, its whole extent. So this is just to, uh, to describe a little bit the wall macroscopically. <laughs> and you see here the, the head uh, with the covers and the two telescopes, two lasers with beam expanders. Behind the telescopes, we have these detection units with um, shutters, with a shutter for dark uh, measurements, with a camera for the alignment of uh, the lasers, and uh, with two detectors, two APD detectors due to the near infrared signals we measure. And um, at uh, the detection unit after uh, telescope, uh, after the first telescope, we have a polarizing beam splitter that analyzes the backscatter, the backscatter signal at um, the parallel and perpendicular uh, polarized component. And so at uh, the bottom, we have the box with uh, the computer of the system and the UPS, the acquisition system and the laser power. And this is uh, the positioner that allows the head to move at different directions. And uh, just to briefly comment on the acquisition system, this enables us to measure um, in an interlaced way uh, the signals from both lasers at both telescopes. And the measurements between uh, the lasers A and B um, have a difference of 0.1 second almost instantaneously for our purposes. And so 
how how we constructed the design of uh, of Wally. How how to how we how we formulated the way it measures dust orientation. Uh, we'll go a step back and see that um, the interaction the the interaction of the laser light with the aerosol the particles in the atmosphere is described for non-oriented particles for randomly oriented particles with a diagonal this diagonal element this backscatter matrix whereas for oriented particles the element the matrix is not diagonal diagonal and anymore and the off diagonal elements are generally not zero so we designed wally to measure these off diagonal elements that would provide us the information that the dust particles are oriented in the atmosphere and uh, here is the design of uh, the system you see the emission unit uh, of laser A and B. In front of, in front of the lasers, uh, we have uh, optical elements uh, for laser to change the polarization of the emission. And in front of laser A, uh, a halfway plate. In front of laser B, that emits a elliptically polarized light, a quarter wave plate and a halfway plate the beam expanders, and then at the detection units after each telescope, for the first detection unit, uh, we have a half plate for uh, calibration purposes, the camera for the alignment, and uh, then a linear uh, analyzer, the PBS, that analyzes the backscatter, the polarization of the backscatter signal in the parallel and uh, perpendicular uh, linear polarization. Uh, the same, almost sim not the same, uh, the difference for, for the detection unit after telescope B is that we have here a circular polarizer. So we uh, analyze, we measure the right circular and left circular um, polarization of the backscatter signal. And uh, this, um, this is how the signals uh, are formulated. So uh, this is a Miller matrix uh, description of our system. The laser emission, this is uh, the backscatter matrix of the atmosphere for uh, uh, oriented particles, the half-wave plate for calibration and the PBS. So the signal uh, at um, the, trans the transmitted and reflected component and reflected detectors after the PBS, uh, their ratio provide a ratio that uh, contains only uh, off diagonal elements um, except the first element of the backscatter matrix. So in case of random orientation, we see that the calibrated ratio, this is a calibration constant, that the calibrated ratio is equal to one because these off diagonal elements are zero. And in case of uh, oriented particles, this ratio, this calibrated ratio is not equal to one. So this is a direct, this is, this is the direct orientation flag we uh, derive from um, wall. And actually this is the measurements. These are the measurements I will show to you in the uh, following slides because we also have uh, more, more complicated measurements with our elliptically polarized uh, laser, but we do not use them uh, for the time being. Uh, this is a future uh, work. And uh, as you can see, okay, again, uh, the difference here is that we have also the Miller matrix for the quarter wave plate before the PBS. And uh, as you can see, more elements of the of diagonal elements and elements of the backscatter matrix are contained in these measurements and uh, uh, probably providing us more information about the dust microphysics size uh, and the refractive index. But this is a work that needs to be done in the future. 
And then there is a lot of uh, calibration, calibration, calibration for this instrument. And um, for example, the, the, we ensure that the, the polarization of the emission from uh, laser A um, corresponds is, uh, is at the desirable angle, which is at 45 degrees with respect to the coordinating system of the detection. So uh, this is not so trivial. Uh, in fact, it changes every time we do the alignment of the system. And um, it changes, it, it, it slightly changes, but it, for our purposes that we need very accurate measurements, uh, it, uh, it, provides a, it provides us different answers and uh, we need to calibrate every time we align the system. More, about, more info about the design and the calibration of the system uh, is provided in our uh, journal in AMT, that, was, that is uh, six months ago. And um, okay, so let's see some results from WALL. Um, as I said, uh, I, I will present the, ori the orientation flags. Um, and this is uh, a case from Athens, Greece on February, last February. The measurements are at a viewing angle of six, 60 degrees of zenith. And you see at the left plot, at the left plot uh, is the range corrected signal with a cloud and rain below the cloud. And at the right plot, uh, it's the orientation flag the yellow color is no orientation, whereas any other color is yes orientation. And we see what we expect here. We expect no orientation in the cloud. This is a warm rain. This is a warm cloud with spherical particles. We do not expect orientation in the cloud, but we expect orientation uh, in the rain. So we see this very nice um, signal of orientation here, and we were, we were very happy to get this. It was uh, the first test uh, we did to see that our instrument works well and it provides uh, good answers. The answers we expected. So for we know that for rain particles we have orientation, for uh, warm clouds without ice particles we do not have orientation, and this is what we got from our system. And uh, then this is another case from Athens in March. The measurements is at a viewing angle of 53 degrees of zenith. Again, this is a, a, a cloud. And uh, below this was dust and pollution from Athens. And we had this very nice uh, orientation signals on top of uh, the dust layer and uh, in the cloud. In the beginning, and no orientation in the layer of dust and pollution. And in the beginning, we thought, at least uh, for some, that maybe there was some dust orientation between the cloud and dust. But then, uh, no, it was ice particles. Uh, this is a temperature below zero for these heights and high relative humidity. So uh, this, uh, these were finally ice particles, but still a very nice result for us because it shows that our system can be used for um, studies of horizontal, uh, horizontally oriented ice particles in clouds. And uh, here we are uh, in, uh, for Cabo Verde experiment. I just, we just came back one week ago from Cabo Verde. We were there for one month. And the ASCOS experiment uh, was organized uh, from the European Space Agency. It was um, focusing mainly on the AOLUS satellite validation. And, uh, but we also had a component for um, dust research there. So there, there were many different instruments um, complementing the measurements uh, from WALL-E in situ uh, on board UAVs tailored for dust from the Cyprus Institute, solar radiation measurements at the ground, a solar polarimeter measuring uh, dichroic extinction from the sun, uh, as I showed you uh, in the beginning of the presentation from the University of Hertfordshire, 
and also custom made from um, our team at NOAA, uh, atmospheric le electricity sensors providing electric field and electric charge of the particles in the atmosphere. That was on board balloons. And uh, I'm very happy to present the first dust orientation measurements we have from Wally. These were acquired uh, at Mindelo Capo Verde on the 23rd of June in two, 2022. The measurements are at a viewing angle of 60 degrees of zenith. And what we see here is um, dust particles from one kilometer up to 4.5 to five kilometers and uh, the marine boundary layer up to one kilometer and clouds, broken clouds on top of the marine boundary layer. And we see here that after 10 UTC, we have, again, I, I remind you that yellow color, yellow color is no orientation, whereas any other color is uh, yes orientation. So we see a very clear signal of orientation in the dust. Um, I have to note here that uh, the signals are, um, are usable. Uh, the, the quality assured signals are above 1.2 kilometers up to 2.5 to 3 kilometers. Above that, we lost our signal. We didn't have quality assured signals. So we do not know what happens. Uh, up to the top of the dust layer, but we see a clear signature of orientation between 1.5, let's say, to three kilometers. And um, we were very happy to see that we got also electric field, relatively high electric field measurements for the same, at the same height. Uh, during measurements four hours before we measured this feature. So uh, we are very excited about this result, but we, uh, we have also to explain, some, to investigate some things here. The first is why we do not see the same orientation feature uh, in the earlier LiDAR measurements. A, a possible explanation about, uh, about this is that uh, both the electric field measurements and the wall measurements and the orientation uh, measurements from Wally uh, were derived when the cloud presence, the broken cloud presence was more uh, prominent. Whereas here we have relatively, uh, relatively clear sky. So uh, this is very preliminary now, but uh, we starting we are we are starting thinking that maybe the electric the clouds have something to do with the electric field in the dust, and uh, we have to explain also why we see no orientation in other cases uh, during the scores. As for example, for this allofted layer, um, this is from the twenty seventh of June no orientation signal was derived during uh, this time. So uh, to conclude my presentation, uh, I want to emphasize a little bit uh, about the importance and uh, probable perspectives of uh, uh, orientation measurements. They may, pro they may provide an explanation for the physical mechanism that retains large dust particles in the atmosphere. Upon their proof, um, upon the proof that dust is oriented, uh, we have to see the effect of oriented dust particles on incoming sunlight and cl climate. And um, we also have this perspective for our instrument of facilitating also other uh, fields of research, such as uh, monitoring horizontally oriented ice crystals. So with this, I thank you very much for your attention and. Um, I will be happy to answer to any questions you may have. Wonderful. Thank you so much again for the presentation. If you have any questions, you can use the raise hand feature in Zoom. Uh, I see we also have a, a question in the chat here from Santiago. Um, I don't know whether you can see the chat, Alexandra. 
Okay, I can see, but I can I am reading it now. Okay. Um, you may mention this later, but can you derive degree of linear probably yes and degree of circular polarization or degree of ellipticity? Also, can you provide some idea? Uh, for the precision and accuracy in this degree of linear polarization. Yeah, um, we can provide, uh, we can derive, uh, we have derived volume linear depolarization ratio measurements, uh, but uh, we, we cannot do it simul simultaneously with uh, our orientation measurements. And uh, because our system is not um, optimized to Measure uh, measure VLDR. It's um, and it's just more of a quick check of what we see in the atmosphere. We do not use it as a, a very accurate measurement. So we do not really do this, and uh, we can pro degree of circular polarization. I yeah, I think we could do this, but. No, I haven't thought about this. The, our focus is different, so I have to think about to answer this question about the degree of circular polarization. Uh, did I answer your question or uh, that was not sufficient? <laughs> yes, 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 you give me. I mean, it's just uh, an idea. Maybe I'll follow up with later with you. <laughs> OK. So another. Um, Another question is, could you tell us dust season in Spain? Could you tell us dust season in Spain and Athens? Do you think dust events are increased this year? Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> about this. Um, I think, okay, I, have a, I do not have extensive measurements to answer this. And maybe other people from my group are more uh, relevant to answer this question. But uh, it's my feeling that dust events have increased not the last year, the last couple of years. But this is not a very scientific answer. It's just my feeling. So, any other questions? I I have one more question. Uh, the uh, the I can see a slide. Uh, 24, I think they want the, the slide where you show the electrical field measurement. Yeah, yes. this one. So, uh, no, I, I just maybe I didn't catch what you say. I mean, the electrical field measurement happened earlier than the detection of orientation oriented particles. Is that yes. right? See, That's so, right. so, but, uh, yeah, so, but here is a little bit confusing that the you, you do have uh, a non-zero electrical field earlier and you don't see oriented particles earlier. Is, is that yeah. right? It is right, yes. But can you, can I explain a little bit better? This? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Actually, um, I thought I used here a, a new slide, but I used my old slide that um, I, I had also small clouds drawn on the slide. <laughs> so uh, during the electric field measurements, there were more clouds. Uh, during, let me, do you see my- Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. During, point, yeah. The, yeah. during this time, this is re relatively clear. And then we- this is more cloud presence here when we get the orientation signal. So we think that there is a connection between the cloud oh. presence, the cloud presence and the, the orientation. And oh. that that is also a little bit. So please, these are just preliminary thoughts we have. So uh, let's not really. <laughs> I, I, I said this in a, with a cautious way. But we see no orientation during clear days. We see no electric field when we see no orientation. Okay. So we think there is there is something 
uh, there. The, I, we think there is uh, something uh, with the presence of the clouds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I have an observation. It's just uh, about some of the matrices you put in the beginning of the slide. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it, it's an observation. Maybe you can comment on this. It's just the fact, like for example, this one. You can, if, if, when you have the atmosphere uh, mm -hmm. matrix, there you're making an assumption that uh, there is a symmetry in the matrix. You have the F14 is equal to F41, yeah. Yeah. for example, which if you have orient oriented particles, that may not necessarily be the case. So I wonder if with your system, you can test that. Can you measure for F41 and measure F14 and compare them? Um, I have derived my, the, I have derived the formulas, for example, this, um, this uh, orientation flag formulas, considering this. Oh, but, I see. Okay. But, but, yeah. matrix, but if F14 is not the same as F41, then it will show up here. I'm not, not the F14, because this is a linear polarized uh, emission, but uh, for the elliptically polarized layer laser, it will show up in uh, the signal. Okay. But, no, it, it, but, yeah. But let me point out that we do not measure individual uh, oh, elements yeah. of the backscatter light. We measure the combination. And okay. uh, we have uh, a very convenient combination here that provides us a flag. As I described before, when these are zero, the flag is one. When, when the off diagonal elements are non zero, the flag is not one. But uh, it's not measurement. It, wall does not perform a uh, measurement of individual uh, elements of the backscatter matrix. Okay, no, that, that's clear. Yeah, yeah, no, no that, that's, uh, I mean, it, it was a comment. I didn't mean to, it's yeah, just- Yeah, 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 this, no, 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 no. This, this. go ahead, go ahead, don't- uh... Yeah, yeah, okay, no, that's it, thank you. I have read your paper, it was very interesting. Interesting. Oh, it's, so, it's not official yet. It's, 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 uh, I'm still dealing with the review, so I cannot say okay. much yet. Okay, but uh, I know what you ask, why you ask <laughs> this question. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I guess I'll ask one in the spirit of the fact that this is a future technology working group. If you were to start over now, building and designing your instrument. Would you do anything different now that you've done this? Uh, yes. Yes, actually we will, uh, we will upgrade it. Uh, we have um, a lot of problems with the alignment with uh, imagine having to coordinate two lasers, two telescopes. And uh, we need some upgrade in this respect. Actually, this is this is the reason that we mostly focus right now. To to be to be frank, we mostly focus in one laser, one telescope, just to have uh, robust measurements uh, because the other is very complicated, and we need to facilitate it uh, to facilitate uh, its um, operation, and also the. Um, the wavelength at 1064 is uh, is really difficult in terms of temperatures, distortions uh, in uh, the signals. It's um, we chose it because uh, we have um, we believe we believe, but we have also done some simulations and uh, so that. It's more sensitive to larger dust particles, and we, we in the beginning we focus on larger dust particles. Uh, maybe if I uh, we started now, maybe five thirty two would be would be the option. But uh, I I hope that this wavelength will be will provide um, interesting information in the future about the microphysics of dust. So um, I hope all this 
work and pain, it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Santiago, you had a follow-up question? Well, kind of, I mean, she kind of partially answered. I, I wonder, have you looked into uh, uh, orientation in smoke? Uh, no, but... Uh... I mean, we, yeah, with the 1034, with that wavelength, maybe that's not that great, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah, 532 probably is better, yeah. Yeah, but no, but uh, actually the Cyprus Institute that uh, provides us with uh, in-situ measurements during us course, they have, um, they use during us course uh, an in-situ instrument, uh, its name is Cobalt. And uh, what it does is that uh, it emits light in, um, Two different directions, uh, let's say horizontally and vertically, and uh, they say they can uh, derive orientation from these measurements. Uh, the people who made this instrument, they say they can derive orientation when they see differences in these two directions. And actually, we have discussed with the people from the Cyprus Institute the first orientation signal they saw was in a fresh smoke plume in Cyprus. So that's the second time I hear about smoke orientation. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been in working for the review of, of my paper. I, I yeah. came up with a number of uh, publications of uh, electrical fields measured in smoke in smoke. And, uh, and it's interesting because the only publications that I found are from Russia. I didn't find anything in the, in the Western hemisphere. I mean, but, it, but it's good, it's good, it's good information, but uh, it's, it looks like another place candidate. I mean, you already know, for example, you have the, in those uh, pyrocumulus clouds, you know, big fires, you do see a lightning there. So, yes. you, know, yes. you know, so by extension, you wonder, well, when the when the smoke cloud goes away, is there an electrical field? I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. a reasonable assumption, and it looks mm -hmm. like there it is. I mean, at least from these uh, studies. So, anyways, it's just something to encourage you to look into. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have another fire season in Greece, because you know, now you never know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you well, have, yeah, yeah. You will. <laughs> it's every every summer. It's the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's that's a good idea, and you're the second person. To who mentions that? So probably 1064 is maybe a little bit large, as you said. Yeah. But uh, let's see. No, it might be. I mean, if you go next to, I mean, I don't know if your lidar is portable, but if you go it, you know, downwind from one of these gigantic fires, I mean, you will have enough signal there to see something. Yeah. 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 It's not. It's not that portable. It goes with uh, its container, so we need a crane and uh, everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Anyone else? Well, if not, thank you all for coming. Let's thank Alexandra again. It's a great talk. And hopefully we'll see all of you at the same time, uh, the same day each month going forward. Thank you very much for the opportunity for me to present our results. Thank you. It's our pleasure. <laughs>